Hi all, so happy Saturday and we are back as promised with a deeper dive into the vintage beeswax. I'm loving this and I'm using this on my book covers. There's like so many. The more I work with it, the more ideas I have for projects. So this is the one from the um, Instagram uh, vi video series that I did and so many of you have already watched it and have already produced your own um, pieces of artwork with it because you evidently already had some vintage beeswax on hand so that was pretty cool um, yes I'm gonna show you something that I'm gonna do at the end of this one extra little thing that I added on to it see that chain mm hmm I did a little something extra there so we'll talk about that if you guys haven't seen this over on Instagram and you follow me at rare birds check it out because it's similar to what I'm going today um, it's just a, a different twist on it so if you want to see both of them you can so what I got to work with is the wood panel unprimed I got it from Blick I just got the six by six just to make it manageable for this video time about an hour I do have the larger ones I normally work on the eight by eights but I do like the six by six size I like squares so um, I like both of these um, and so I decided to go with this one because I think it's going to be easier for us to get through the whole process um, in the space of an hour so we're going to have the cradle board so the first part of this is going to be I'm going to lay down a layer onto the wood board and I'm going to use the the calligraphy paper that most of us already have so that's just a good thing to put down as a substrate and welcome to the video today I'm just jumping right into this I'm so excited to get this done you guys know me but most of us have this and if not the links are always below the description in the description box of the video I know a lot of times you guys ask me because you don't see the links but you have to open it up where it says show more and if it drops down most you're gonna see every most of the things I'm using um regularly will be there you just have to scroll all the way down so um yeah i'll make sure that this paper is down there if you don't already have it but any paper including copier paper honestly you could put down um i'm just going to be using some of my onion skin some of the japanese papers i want to build up layers and i just like this is a very thin layer just to put down so we're not just working on the unprimed wood in this case so we're going to get this down and also I'm working with the printables again. I'm just loving this series. Anyhow, so I'm working with this page is I think number 16. And this is a neat one because it's already got so much of the foundations of a basic collage that we could literally put this down and grab some of it and already have a bit of a collage background. And then I'm going to work on top of it with page 19 that I also printed out in onion skin and that way I have a lots of different small sections to you know to begin to actually layer over the collage now what I'm going to go for today is just lots of layers that you're going to be able to see kind of laying underneath because they're going to go translucent make sure you have yourself a piece of tissue paper and then I'm going to use some of my vintage Japanese papers but you can definitely use tea bags like I used over in my YouTube video and I use tea bags a lot anyway I just thought I would mix it up and just show you some different papers but you can literally take your tea bags open them up and you get this really beautiful thin paper to lay down and that's what I actually used on the um, it's right in front of me on this one right here I used the tea bags so that's what we're going to do. So that's basically what we're going to work with. I'm going to work with the PVA glue and um, I'm going to work with my PVA glue and just kind of make sure I have everything which I'm, I'm pretty sure that I did. Um, I'll use the glitter glue so since so many of us already have that one I'll work with this one and um, I'll have my glue brush and then also just make sure you have like a an old chipboard brush or one of these cheapo sort of hair brushes that you can get from the dollar store or something like that but you kind of want it to be try to be a natural bristle 
and our heat gun, okay? So that's basically what we're gonna use. Let's get started. So the first layer is going to be, like I said, the um, I've had this upside down because I plan on getting all the rest of um, this glue out of this bottle. <laughs> so, you know what? I will deal with that later. I do have this one. So, come on. Oh, that would make sense. I forgot I had that pin in there. So, this is Art Glitter Glue. It's a good PVA. I wouldn't use my glue stick on this because we're putting different surfaces together. We're working with the wood and then we're putting paper down and we're actually going to be heating this up and you know we have a lot of things that we're going to be doing with this um just get this off it's kind of clogged a little bit we have a lot that we're going to be doing with these layers so you would just want to make sure that you have a good i don't know why this is clogged well we all have gone through this right so we're just going to open up a little bit more Okay, there we go. I need glue. Don't be afraid to get your glue on here. You can always take it off, but we just want a good layer. So when we go to put this down, we're going to get a nice stick. Okay. And when I have extra, I just take my glue brush and just do this. Just kind of rub it back in there because it's nothing wrong with it and it's still good glue. You can also um, carry the this the paper around to the side I'm not going to do it in the video because I know I'm not going to you know have time to really do the sides but the same way that we're doing the top of this you can literally carry your encaustics around the whole edge or you can um paint that or put solid paper down which whatever you know whichever you want to do or you can leave it natural but just know you can carry this around the sides as well. So you know how I like to stipple this. I'll tell you guys that that's an important thing to do because it see how it makes those those peaks and valleys, um, and that really allows your paper to stick. Super good. Put that back and um, put it down. So I'll lift it up so you can see. You can see like the stippling. You want those valleys and those mountain peaks because it really does make um, your paper stick better. And I'm going to be using, I'm putting the smooth side down and I have the, the more textured side up. Just because I know it's just going to be more receptive to, you know... Oops, let's get this so that it's right. It's going to be very receptive to my layers and gluing and all that good stuff. So let's just go ahead and get... Okay. I'm going to get that smooth. Okay, so we have our first layer down. So, it's looking great. Now, we're going to dry in between. So, this layer, and then I'm going to put my, this layer down. And then, we're going to let this dry. I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want my pattern to be. Maybe something like this. I kind of want to grab... That looks good so I'll just kind of lay it down and sort of crease my edges so when I come back to put it down I'll have a good idea of where I want this to fit okay so we're going to now go with another layer of glue but as opposed to using the um, the PVA or the glitter glue which we could, I'm going to go to my glue stick now because I know I'm sticking paper to paper. 
And then I can use this Giotto because I know that um, I don't have to worry about the surfaces releasing. Like it's, this paper will not release from the Giotto. Where if I just put this down on the wood board in the paper with the heat heating it up and stuff. I mean I could have an opportunity for it to start releasing on this board and I didn't want that. But the reason why I'm not using a glitter glue is because it's a little moist and my paper is, not only is it thin, because the onion skin is thin, it's going to be very absorbent and I don't want the color to start bleeding, you know, because it's an inkjet. And I find that when I want to get things down and in this case... I put a really good layer down there. In this case, where I want this to dry and I'm going to need to kind of s smooth it and stuff. I didn't want it to start um, too much moisture getting in it. Okay. So I know if I use the Giotto, it's going to be a perfect glue for this and it won't it won't le leach too much moisture up here. So that's our first layer. You can see that's looking good. Also, you see how we get the um, that bubbling? We know that that's what the onion skin will do. So that was, you know, that's the other thing you just don't want. It's too wet, and it's and as it is, it's already reacting to the little bit of moisture that's in. So if you have your Uhu glue stick, that'll be perfect for the um, to use. Um, because it'll it'll stick this paper to the under paper, and if you don't have onion skin, I'm just showing onion skin because in the video. On Instagram, I just use plain copier paper. So I just thought I would show you guys just the difference in, the, in you know, what it'll look like. But you can definitely have just run this through your copier just on your, you know, premium color, um, premium, premium copier, color copier paper. Like, you know, Hammer Mill or one of those. That way, you know, you're getting a really good quality paper. You know, for the longevity of your artwork. The nice thing, too, is that it's going to be embedded in these, this wax. So that's going to help protect it. So, really just being very careful because I don't want to rip my paper. Now, if you don't have onion skin, you can use tracing paper. Uh, any kind of translucent paper. And that's why I did it like this, where I picked two papers. Even if your onion skin is in precious quantities, <laughs> then it, if you pick this paper and this paper or one of the similar ones in the pack, you're going to get a lot of bang for the buck because you have all these different patterns that you can use and incorporate as opposed to one large sheet with the same pattern. And even with this, these patterns around the sides are different. So these can be used. So it's a good way when you're wanting to use your onion skin it's got a good way to use it and preserve it so that's looking good so now I'm going to let this relax I'm going to let it finish drying I'm going to keep an eye on it every you know few minutes just to make sure that it's drying smooth I don't mind some of the wrinkles in it because that's going to add the character to the print but you don't we don't want a lot in here so we'll be back once this is dry alrighty Okay, awesome. So we're back now and the board is dry. The important thing to, about letting this dry, just take your time with it, is because as we build up, we're actually going to be coating this with a uh, this product that actually is made from plastic. This is not beeswax. It's actually a product that's plastics that replicate the beeswax okay so you're actually going to be locking moisture in a layer of plastic and we know that's not the best idea right and even if you were working with beeswax it's still a waxy coat coating that's going to cover the board and won't allow the um 
the moisture to leach out properly. The good thing about an unprimed board is that you still it the the um the moisture can still come out the back of it. So that's the good news. So if it's not totally dry, you won't have to you know be so concerned because it can come out the back. If it were a prime board, then it won't. If it's primed on the front, it's not going to come out the back very easily. So you know if you want to prepare some of these, a few of these and um, overnight and then come back the next day and do them that's always a nice idea as well so I'm going to go ahead now and trim this I think I'm going to err on the side of caution and I'm going to snap this blade off and start with a fresh blade because I know I changed this blade recently but it's always good to this thing close to have a fresh blade especially when we're cutting our artwork like this and we want to make sure that so put that down there actually I'll leave it locked in there and then I'll remember to put that away properly okay so now now we have a fresh edge and then what you want to do is you just, I just like to angle, so you can see it. I like to angle the blade slightly towards the board, just slightly, and just very lightly. We're going to go through the layers. You know, we're not going to try to, first thing, we're not going to try to do it all <clears throat> At, you know just go straight through at one time and secondly we're just going to get close enough there may be a little overhang but that's okay because <clears throat> once we actually get the vintage beeswax on there and we're at our final point then we can come in and trim up any extras that may be there at the end because at the end it's going to be already nice and um dry the wax will make it harder you know it'll kind of give it that that crispy <laughs> kind of edge so anything that's laying like any of this little extra right there we won't have to worry about it because we'll be able to get that off later you just want to get it close enough and it actually got it pretty close all the way around just a little bit here okay so now Let's go to the next stage. So a couple things we're going to do. We're going to do some collaging. But the first thing I want to show you is I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper, just good old-fashioned tissue paper that we do our Mark Rothko's on and that we get from the dollar store or anything like that. And I'm going to, this is, a really lovely stamp. I just love this one. One of my patrons made this one and this one for me. And I want to use this. And I want to show you also how you can use your stamps. So you can actually just make. Um, oops. You can make a bunch of these like we do with our um, fragments. When we do our, our jelly printing fragments. And um, then that way you have them ready to go. So I'm going to take this and actually I'm going to flip it upside down and do it like this so I can just control the print. I can see it through here exactly. I got a really good print there. I'm going to do another one because I think it's enough on here to, yeah, to get another print. So the nice thing about it is that... Um, Go ahead and wipe that off real quick. Is that you can have these, you know, make a bunch of these for later. So I use the Wow embossing pad. Now this is all Seth Apter's products. So, well, I'm, you know, it's his um, his formulations and designs. So Wow embossing powder and pad. And I'm going to actually use this color here, which is crusty copper. I oh, love it. This is such a yummy color, especially with the colors we're working with. And then this is a clear embossing pad so it's designed to just make the print like we have here you can see it made a really good print and now we're going to put some 
the embossing powder down. And you could actually put it right on here too. You can work both ways. You can put your embossing powder. We could actually stamp right on the board wherever you want it. And then put it or I'm doing it because I want to show you guys layers. And so this just gives us this other extra uh, layer to really have fun with and just see how it's going to layer up. So that's again the crusty copper and you can get all of this on Seth, sethapter.com. You can get it on Seth's site. Um, all of these wonderful products and including the vintage beeswax. And you guys know that I'm on Seth's creative team. Now I think most of you've heard it. So once a month I will be going through, I mean, uh, showing you the products that I've been using of his, that I've been playing with and that I really love. It's just a good way for you to, you know, sort of see if it's something that you want to get or not without necessarily making the investment, right? That's the whole point of, I know that's what I look at videos for, to try to decide, do I want to get this or not? Or, or watch them use the product enough to determine, oh, that really does work well or something like that. So, and it's fun. And Seth is really laid back, so we're just having a good time. So... Now you can see, look how great that looks. See that? Oh, it's just gorgeous. I love this color. And these embossing powders, which I'm going to do a thing on embossing powders too, because I use, I used to use these all the time. And now it's like so many things, ways I want to bring this back into my work. So, so there's a number of the colors, but so here we have, let's go ahead and get our water pen just want to go around this just to get that really nice frayed edge let's do this here that one over there so that just gives us something to start working with Boy, oh boy, this is going to be good. And you know, you want this little, uh, what's called a deckled edge in paper. This is considered a deckle. I want to get it kind of close to the, the stamp, but not too close. But I want to see a little bit of that. So this will glue down on here. And you're going to see how, because we're using these translucent papers, it's all going to really layer on beautifully. So let's grab some of this. This was the sheet that's designed for all kinds of things. You know, you can make tags out of this, ATCs. Um, and also, it just gives us different bits of... Um, That they are just different bits of that's what I want of script. And this is some of my scripting. This is the one that's that I made from my um, stencils, which are. I was in the final stages of approving some of my newer, some of the additional designs I put in. So we're close now to getting them up on the website. Um, let's put that piece there. Just kind of layering. <clears throat> we're going to be able to layer over these papers nicely too so because I'm using the um, the onion skin we're really gonna see where I'm just kind of figuring out how I want to do this but being able to layer over top of 
that um, stamp as well. That there. Let me see what else I want. Hmm. Okay, let me I'll stop there for a second and let's go ahead and glue this down. So I still have these papers that I want to put down. And do I want to put one of my circles? Maybe even put one of these down because I can embed this in. You'll see, we're going to do a couple layers so we can get this in somewhere. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get. So I'm going to use the Giotto. Let's start with this one here. Once again, we're just. Just doing you know, your basic collage. Just really creating a good composition. I know a few of you said you'd like to have more principles on collage. And so I think I'll end up doing something around that because there are some basic things if you do it makes your collaging more successful okay so i'm going to kind of overlap this over that let's put this one down and you really can build this up as much as you want i'm not going to build up as many layers but you literally could just keep on putting translucent layers down and um, and then put the medium, the, this, the vintage, the baked textures down. And then, you know, between every, every layer, and I normally say I do about three, two to three. Um, for this one, two will be good, but two to three, but you can do four or more if you just keep on wanting to kind of float. The point of it would be if you wanted to float your images between these layers, because you will, they will float. You'll, will see where it's going to look like you have a layer under layer. I like how that, how this, uh. Is showing through around the white there and then we're going to put this one down I love 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 this type of collaging I do quite a bit of this and working on these cradle boards okay there so now we you know you have this thing where we're layering over and but this is all translucent papers so that's going to be pretty cool then before we actually do this completely i think i'm just going to do it part the way like right there so we can see the difference between the edge that's going to be I think I left something off. Where's my little, here it is. <laughs> Didn't put my little um, temple shrine seal down. I don't think I like it twisted. I want it straight up. That's what I like about this Giotto. It does give you enough time to kind of fool around with it. So I'm going to just do it part the way like that. You can do it the entire way um, and it will still go translucent with your tea bags or whatever, but I'm just gonna do, I think I wanna do it like this. Just to add that extra bit of interest and you'll, you can, you'll be able to see the difference in, now I'm gonna use my Uhu because I've learned 
that that giotto is really sticky and aggressive and it can tear these papers because this is this vintage this is truly really old uh asian paper and this is um gompi and it came from one of the pages of the book so it's strong but it's definitely old so but the um the the uhu is a little bit more creamy so it doesn't grab the same way that the giotto does and then rip stuff so just you know we use our different glues but you see already just get some down here if i had put this on the board first then i could use it like i'm doing now but then i didn't want it to be too sticky too much higher than what this page was and I wanted to have this um, that feathered edge so this is looking good so right there you can sort of see how we have that variation now but all these layers are going to really look good so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take this bit off I'm okay if it's not super close I just want it I don't want to work with all that extra okay now I am going to float this in here at some point and actually I like I'm gonna cut this I like this as sort of a half a circle or something so let's just And we could actually, I probably will end up having it come off the edge or and maybe this piece will go somewhere else. But that's going to float, so we'll get back to that. Alrighty, so now let's use the, um, the clear embossing pad. And I might float one more thing in there, we'll see. Like I may come back to something on here, we'll see. But this is looking good. So this collage is looking great on this cradle board. It's just beautiful. Everything is down really nice. And now we're going to go ahead and get our first la layer of the vintage beeswax. So what I like to do is really press down and just go over and over and over it. You know, like to really get really good coverage and there'll still be spots that you'll miss and you'll see that when you go to um, heat it but you pretty much I'm looking at it from the side so I pretty much can see that I'm getting pretty good coverage that part's good okay so you see I'm really giving it a good this underneath here because I'm going to have extra powder. I'm really giving it a really good surface so my stuff out the way here try to keep things neat if I can <laughs> okay so now using the baked textures I'm going to need some more I've really been going through this pack here Seth, these waiting for the larger jars or containers to come in. I'm definitely going to be getting one because I love it. So I'm just really sprinkling it on real good all over, all the way to the edge. Okay. And then you can kind of just out the way kind of just tap it down I kind of move it around the same way you flour what way you um, yeah flour and oiled baking pan you know how you kind of just let the flour roll around to all the little spaces where the oil is 
It's probably the best way to describe it. See, that's now we have a nice. Let me see if you can see it. Normally, if you do it like that, yeah, you have a nice coverage. See that? And it's like, it looks like it looks very sandy. It's different size pebbles in here, which is what kind of gives it that. That texture, so I'm gonna put this down very carefully because I'm gonna need to come back to it. But I want to move it away from my workspace because we do not want it all over the place, blowing. Okay, so now just the same thing. Using your heat gun, I start off just kind of going all over the surface a bit, and what that does, it just kind of gets everything starting to get used to the temperature of the heat versus trying to get it all right here and then there and then there just kind of take it all over your board and then as you start seeing it get hot enough that it starts melting then you can kind of let it you know start glazing over in the various areas I like to keep it moving because I don't want to scorch anything. It's starting to go now. Once you get a good overall temperature, then it'll start. Take your time with it. Don't like try to rush through this process. So that way you get a nice even kind of melt. If you do it too much and then it gets too hot in one area, not only can you scorch it, but then you kind of start blowing it around to the other side and then it's not as even. I'm loving this. I'm definitely going to be making this series for sure. I'm loving this. And with these printables, there's so many directions I can go in. Because there's so many different texts in this bundle. Those of you, I mean, so many of you guys have been saying how much you really, really love it. So there is like a lot of ways that you can go in this pack. Okay, so, oh boy, this is really looking good. And the nice thing about there is no drying time. Like, you don't have to wait for it to... dry. Okay. Boy, look at this. Oh, goodness. I love it. So now you can begin to see what I'm talking about. Like, you can literally see where this is laying on top of that where like all these different things are like laying on top of each other because and you can even see the difference between this and that's what you're looking for so if you use translucent papers you get a lot of that even in this piece you can see where there's the layering you can see the text underneath it like all here oh i love it and i wanted to pick this pattern because i knew it had these openings and you can literally see the text through the openings of the um the stamp see i missed a little area there so let's go back and grab it yeah so you can kind of go back over it wherever you see you've missed it it reheats okay so See, it's dry. Oh, I love this. Now, what we're going to do next is, you know me. Oh, I love this. We are now going to do another layer. So I want to do... We're going to put this in some kind of way. We're going to figure out where we're going to put these. 
And I think I have this this one with this woman in here. I like this. I think I'll stick her in here somewhere. Just kind of the bottom half of this scene. Hmm. Okay, let's see where we're going to put this. I don't want to maybe put it in an area like here. That could be nice. Yeah, I like that. So then this is going to be, let's figure out where these pieces are going to go. Let's see. Maybe that there. I think I, I like where I have them like this. Okay, and like I said, you can just continue to to build on top of this. Now, we could have had different stamps and um, and put this down, but I like my composition, so we can keep this going. Now, <clears throat> to get this next layer down, we don't. Um, you don't want to get my we don't put glue down at this point we stick with the the reheating the um the vintage beeswax so i'm gonna start here And then I use the end of this paintbrush and just push it in place. So we'll heat up where we're going to put her. And this is how you continue to collage and add your layers. It's really cool. And this is a similar way that you work with... Um, I'll do the same thing, get this down. This is a similar way you work with actual encaustic wax mediums. You can heat things back up and lay them in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and get... Okay. Be careful not to scorch it. We don't want to scorch anything, but as soon as you get it melted underneath there, it'll... We just want to tack it down. We don't need to get it too much because we're actually going to be putting another layer of wax over this. Just want to make sure you get it down. Enough that it's... Uh, not moving around and it looks good and flat you know okay okay that looks good so I'll lift it up so you can see it so you can see that they're really I like to just brought it up to the camera too quick sorry you can really see that it's in there they're not going to move around but it's definitely another layer right oh, I love it it's definitely another layer and it'll and it'll lay there it's gonna float there like another layer so I can see a place right there that I missed so on that first le level it's funny so just always look at yours really good because when it, it seems like when it cools down you can see the areas that you've missed because it'll be a little dull okay so now let's grab the ink pad or Clear a pad again, and we're going to put another layer. And this, this, we're basically done. This is how quick it actually goes. I want to make sure I don't forget. I got two things, two things to show you because 
once we actually get this next layer down now for those who like the shine um the next me using the um the matte medium which is coming up but i'm just kind of talking about it <laughs> um you can keep it like this because you know this really to me takes the place beautifully of using um what is it uh your um um i'm sorry resins resins that's a word i was searching for um so this really gives a nice surface just like you know the resins would do um and so you can keep this really high gloss i'm going to take it another step because um let me see i need to put something underneath here I'm going to take it another step only because I want to emulate classic beeswax and encaustics, which doesn't have a really high shine. It really has more of a sort of uh, a glazed or hazy, has more of a hazy kind of surface when, when actual beeswax dries. So, I think that's all of my beeswax. I had just enough to finish off this project. Definitely need to get some more. So, same thing. You can just really roll this around the same way you do flour and just grab all those spots. Hey, so that looks good. Go ahead and put the rest in my, I normally try to put it away because otherwise one flip or one twist of the heat gun and it's all over. So now we have, we can see where there's texture there. And I like that because I want to give that kind of raised surface and give it that interest. Now you really want to move it around now because we already have one coat of the vintage bees wax down. So we don't really want, we want that to, it's all going to melt together, but we don't want it to move around too much or start puddling. And this is exactly what you have to do when you're working with traditional caustics as well. With each layer you do, it moves around, but you don't want it to move around too much. And also I want to get my, have my, paintbrush ready because I want to show you an, another technique because in classic in caustic you're using brushes to put the medium down and sometimes when you want to get rid of those those marks that the brushes make then once it dries um, you can use like a, a like an, a hot iron that is designed for waxes but it's like a flat iron or you can shave it and some of the wax off to smooth it down and then reheat it. It's a lot of different ways that you can get a really smooth surface in the traditional. But with this, remember, it's a plastic. So it, as soon as you remove the heat, it's dry. But I want it to emulate the look of the brush marks. Now, this is if you want to get the brush marks in here to, to emulate the beeswax even more you don't have to do it but I like it so I'm going to show you guys how to do it. for those who want to do it you have options boy this is looking good And with each layer that we're putting down, you can see the layer underneath it. That's why I like working with the translucent papers. If you use just all white or 
you know, non, you know, um, translucent papers. It's, you know, it's nice, but you're not going to get this really, this interplay of layers that is so much fun. So that's why I wanted to show you guys the tea bags because tea paper is inexpensive. Even if you went to the dollar store and just got some tea you didn't like, <laughs> even if you're not a tea drinker, just go to the dollar store, get some tea you don't like, heat it up because you want to get the the staining of the tea on the papers and once it's all dried let you know let, lay them out let them dry and then dump the tea out and you got yourself some tea, tea, bag, tea bag papers for a dollar and at the dollar store they have those ones that are like sometimes 24 or 48 in the box so you can get quite a bit for a dollar so there's a lot of ways to go about getting this really these beautiful layers now, of course, the tea bag paper, you're not going to be able to run through your copier. But it doesn't keep you from doing the, the stamping. You can also jelly print on them. You can also jelly print on um, the tissue paper like I showed you. So you can use, you can do your stamping. You can do your jelly prints. You can do the fragments like we've done before and have all that stuff. And then tea bag paper. And then with your copier paper or just layers of this you can achieve the same thing so don't feel like oh I don't have an onion skin I'm not going to be able to do it like Robin did it or oh I don't have the fancy Japanese papers nope you can do all those different things and it'll just be it'll still be really gorgeous okay so now that I've got it heated up where I want it I can see everything is there what I do is I kind of heat up areas and I take my um, my brush and I literally just go over it just melt some and then <laughs> and you get the neatest I'm telling you brush marks and it really does begin to emulate the same because I would use a very similar brush to this in, in my encaustics, in fact, they look similar to this. And uh, and I find you can use this brush over and over again because it kind of heats up. But these are cheap dollar store brushes. You know how you get a bunch of them or you go to the paint store and they're like 50 cents each or something like that. So don't use your good brushes. And you don't want it to be plastic. You want it to be some kind of hair because, of course, they'll melt <laughs> from this heat. Okay. I like this. Okay, alrighty. So that takes care of that. And I'll lift this up so you can see. Now see all those brush marks in them? That's one of the things that I like in the caustics because I like the texture. So I don't take a lot of the brush marks out of my work. Because I just like I like to have this kind of can you guys see that? See that surface? I love it. And so you can still emulate it with these products just use yourself a an old brush and you get this really really beautiful surface you guys can see okay so now to get rid of the shine because we want this I'm going for beeswax so we want this kind of matte hazy kind of look I mean this is beautiful like this if you like the high shine by all means stop there because basically you've got this look look of resin um but you have all this really neat texture and so like definitely go with it but I'm going to show you for all those who don't want it um how we can get rid of it okay so for the next part of this we're nice and dried and we're going to use golden matte medium
Okay, so you want the matte medium because we're going to use this to get rid of the, um, the shine. And so just using my glue brush again, you can use the chip brush. You could use a brush like this, not the same one, but have a couple of different ones because you just really want to kind of just stipple it on here. I mean, you could, you could brush it on there too. But the thing about stippling, it does help to get it down into the little low places. So whatever you find works for you. This is one of the techniques that um, Seth shared with me because I was talking about the shiny surface. And he said this is what he does to get rid of it, to give it more of that beeswax look. And I was like, oh, wow, brilliant brilliant so definitely and this is just remember it's all plastics because this isn't actually real wax it's a plastic the uh, vintage beeswax and so also um, and we're using acrylics which is also a plastic so these are compatible And when this dries, it's going to be some high spots and some low spots. And I like that because it you'll find that with traditional encaustics, the same thing will happen. You'll have some sections that look a little shinier than, than the other spots. So if you don't like any of the shine, you can do another layer and lock it, knock it back. I'm going to let this dry, but I pretty much think I'm not going to do another layer because I think pretty much I'm going to like it like this. <laughs> but, you know. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry. But you can see already how it's now just a low sheen. See that like low, it's almost like satin paint, wall paint versus high gloss. You just get that really low sheen, but you'll see there's a few high spots. And so now it really has that, it really has that beeswax look to it. I love it. Okay, and then we'll leave this to dry. And when I come back, I have one last technique to show you guys that will finish off the, um, it'll finish off this look to really give it a, this really neat gloss. So this is the one that I did on, um, Instagram and it's the same thing but I did one final step and it just it gives this low sheen to it you see the difference right now how this is a, a bit flat and this has like a really it's still dull but it just has a low sheen to it which really really looks like <laughs> this really looks like beeswax <laughs> all righty okay so we'll be back once that dries and we're done. Look at how gorgeous this is. So you guys can just get your own little crate of boards. Like I said, I got this from Blick. I think it was like $6, $5.85, something like that. You can get these. They're, arc, they're beautiful artist quality boards. And like you could make these wonderful collages, um, you know to um, enhance the artwork that you're you're already selling to give as gifts you know however you want to do it all right so we'll be back in a little bit all right so now for the final step this is all nice and dry it's cooled down i really like that that one coat was just enough i've got enough highs and lows still on here just a little bit of shine but otherwise it's perfect so the last thing that i do is take a little bit of Doc Martens Wonder Ball Balsam, which is for my shoes. I love Doc Martens. And so I use these on my shoes, but I also use this on my leather, like on my Jelly Junkadories and my leather and stuff. I love this stuff. It's such a good conditioner. 
So I had the idea just to take a little bit of it and just take a cloth or I'm just using a tissue here. Just take a little bit of it and just polish the surface like you would shoes. Now this is like a balsam, so uh, this is not, it doesn't like this tissue. I'll just use a little sponge that came with it. I usually use another cloth, but I don't have it, so I'll just use a sponge. So, just wiping it on. I'm telling you, it is like so cool. And this has like, um, I don't know exactly all the conditioners in here, but I know that they're natural leather conditioners, so it's not like a wax and it makes a really thin layer, so it's not like you're coating like a wax over top of this plastic. It's really just like, it's just giving it a nice sheen. And we, I'll, I'll sure to show the difference here. You see, let me get this. Okay. You see that you can already see the difference where you just got a little bit of sheen there. And see how this looks flat? Like you're really not picking up any shine. And this is actually a... Um, an encaustic wax on paper. So this is traditional beeswax encaustic and white encaustic. And you can see how it's a similar, see how you get this little bit of a sheen there? And see how we've got that little bit of a sheen where if you look down here where I didn't do it yet, see how it's dull? So that little bit, I'm telling you, makes a difference. So any kind of shoe, I mean, you could play around with different kinds of uh, maybe little balsams that you have. Even if you have something you normally use on your face, it's a really thin kind of a... Uh, kind of like just, it just treats a little bit like this. It doesn't, it's nice. What I like about this Doc Martens, which is why I like to use it, is that... It doesn't leave it, it doesn't feel like wax that's on like shoes. It doesn't feel like shoe polish. It just has a little bit of shine. And over time, it'll just kind of absorb into here. But it'll just give it that little bit of polish that to me, that did it on this one too, that to me just even more closely mimics um, actual encaustic wax you can really see the difference now see that but it's not shiny shiny like um like it was before it's not glassy gloss it's not a glossy glassy kind of look all righty so there we have it this is the finished product project i love it it's gorgeous it's ready to go out into the world love to see what you guys do with yours so Yep, I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, it is the vintage. It's the vintage beeswax. It's under the baked textures. And he has a number of baked textures. Like, they're all different types. I have all different ones I love, I love using. Then, like, this green just gives, like, a little bit of a green tint. Everything kind of does, like, a little bit of a tint to it. Um, but... This one right here will just kind of go clear with a little vintage-y background. So it's the vintage beeswax. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me again on this Saturday. Hope you guys enjoy this project. If, you're, if it's your first time here, please follow me. I'm still working on getting a 10K. We're coming up to just a couple hundred now. So I figure in the next week or so, we'll be ready to gear up for the gifting. Um, so, you know, spread it out. Check out the rules and they're um, in the link for my blog post below this video in, in the um, description section. And yeah, let's see. So I'll see you guys next week. And please thumb it up if you enjoyed this video. I think that's everything, guys. All right. Take care. Have a great, great blessed week and love you all. Bye bye.